Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Hard Truth. Thank you so much for watching and much love to all of our friends outside the United States, around the world. Listen, we're still talking about DM. We're talking about somebody that survived a quadruple murder, was right there in the house, saw a perpetrator, yelled out to people to be quiet. I mean, the more they add, the more ridiculous this story becomes. All right, this statement is a problem and we need to talk about it, all right? So grab that coffee, a nice cup of tea because it's Sunday, all right? As we begin our story. Before we get started on Dylan, I want to make a quick comment about the DNA. If there were two DNA samples found um, near Maddie or near her room or in her room, and we're assuming that there was a cleanup, at least I'm, I'm assuming there's a cleanup because there was no blood trails, okay? So if they cleaned up and they missed the two DNA that are were found in the room, that to me is even more critical to, to find the identity of those two people and the one on the glove outside. I think it's horrendous that uh, Grace up there would say it's not, it doesn't really matter, the glove, but it does. I think the fact that nine times out of 10, nine and a half times out of 10, there was a cleanup in that house. And so if there was a cleanup and they still found the two DNA samples in Maddie's room, we need to know the identity of those two people, all right? And we need to know that yesterday. Okay, so what do you think about that one? Okay, now let's get back to Dylan. We can see here, this is from CNN. This was published November the 15th, okay? November the 15th, which is two days after the uh, murders. And it says it was updated on the 15th. All right, it says, investigators are continuing to work diligently on establishing a timeline of relevant events to recreate the victim's activities on the evening of November the 12th and early morning of November 13th, following all leads and identifying persons of interest. A police statement says, okay, that doesn't sound like somebody that has a statement from somebody that was there in the house, saw somebody leave, heard noises. I mean, you've got almost a positive ID of the murderer. You've got somebody that was right there on the second floor seeing someone leave. You've got somebody that's telling you when people may have been asleep and when they woke up playing with the dog, crying. I mean, you've got this detailed statement from this girl. And yet, the way this sounds, they really didn't have a clue as far as the timeline of relevant events. All right? They didn't know yet. This doesn't sound like they had Dylan's statement. That's my point. Excuse me. This is the point I'm trying to make. The police statement does not sound like they had a statement from a witness that was right there in the house. Okay, because remember at this time they were still having us think that Dylan and Bethany were asleep on the first floor, November the 15th. All right, so November the 15th. By then, they have asked Dylan what she heard or saw, and Bethany. And so the report, the statement that they're giving in this particular article and another one that I think was the New York Post, it doesn't sound like they have, this paragraph doesn't sound like they have, you know, that much information from Dylan. So maybe the statement from Dylan 
wasn't even created until December when it was time to arrest Brian Kohlberger. All right, what do you think about that one? Now, here is the most far-fetched of all of the DM stories that I've heard. All right, this is the sun, but this is not the only place that uh, this is published. It says, Idaho murders update as it's revealed survivor Dylan Mortensen thought noise from killings were from partiers. This was published February the 12th. So this is almost a month and a half after the Idaho four murders. By then... This man has been arrested. By then, um, they have the sheath and the DNA. You know, by then they have a lot of, they, they have DM statement. And so, for this to be out on February the 12th with sort of a different take than what's in the PCA is surprising. All right, because there's no mention of noise from partiers, um, in the PCA, this is like new information. All right. It says Dylan Mortensen, a student living in the House of Horrors where the crime took place, allegedly screamed for others to quiet down in the middle of the fateful night. And yes, it says allegedly. Okay. And I respect them for that. But the point of the matter is I've read this in several different publications. And to me, it, she was trying to change her story. Now, assuming that she did say this, all right, Bethany and Dylan told us in their statements that um, it was quiet from three to four. Everybody got in by two, and by four, everybody was asleep or could have been asleep. It was so quiet, all right? At least they were in their rooms. That's what the PCA says. So how is it that at 4 or 5, all of a sudden the whole house is live. And we got intruders, at least one intruder in there, you know, murdering people in the next five minutes. And he's only got seven or eight minutes to do it. It's just, you know, if these statements are true, the one in the PCA about uh, Dylan's statement, and also this rumor, which is what I guess I'll call it, that she yelled out to her other roommates to quiet down. If all of this is true, I'm ready for this case to be thrown out. I'm just going to be honest with you. What do you think about this one?